may know me from my time on the international pro circuit. Recently, I've retired from that, and now I'm focusing my energy on coaching, which is where you come in. You see, I've spent the last 15 years or so traveling to more than 50 countries around the world, working with top coaches from Denmark, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea, and on and on. I spent tens of thousands of dollars traveling, learning, competing, and now I've condensed all that information so that we can bring you a program where you can learn that information efficiently and successfully to make you the best player you can be. Footwork is the foundation to being a great badminton player. If you're not moving efficiently around the court, then you can't challenge your opponent on the other side of the net. That's why we made footwork one of the three main streams of our program. The first footwork course that we're gonna to begin today is front court offense footwork. The reason that is so important is in order to build up your offense, whether it's singles, doubles, or mixed doubles, you need to establish yourself at the net and learn how to move there in the fastest and most efficient way. So what you can expect to gain from this course is an improvement in your movement efficiency, your timing, and the quality of your shot. Because if you're there in good balance, then the shot quality will go way up. The first module of this course is the front court offense on the forehand side. But before we begin the actual steps, I want to talk a little bit about footwork as a whole. You see, footwork is so important to improving your game because if you're not moving in the correct way, then you're not going to be efficient in your energy or your shots. And if you don't practice it correctly without the bird, you won't do it correctly with the bird, which is why we need to practice footwork so much so we can totally forget about the bird and concentrate exclusively on our racket, body, and feet positioning. A general metaphor that I like to use for footwork in badminton is the idea of a hula hoop. Everybody knows how to keep a hula hoop going, right? It goes around and around, and what happens when you stop? It falls, because you've killed that energy. So footwork for badminton is similar in that way that you always have to have the energy circulating in your legs and in your body throughout the course of the rally. The only time you're allowed to stop and let that hula hoop fall is at the end of the rally and before the next one starts. So that's a really important theme that will come up again and again, is how to keep that energy going. Now you're not actually gonna be going like this with your hips, but you have to keep the energy or the chi going throughout your body to keep that current accessible for when you need it. Another important metaphor that I use in my teaching is it's really important to get a solid push in your initial movement towards the bird. If you don't get a solid push, then you won't have enough energy to get all the way the distance of where you need to go. So something that I found really useful for my littler students now, and something that I myself as a professional player realized was helpful is, because I hate spiders, so I would imagine that there were giant tarantulas under my feet, and if I don't push down hard on them, they're gonna crawl up my leg and bite me. So that's really important to think about when you initiate that movement, that you push strong down into the ground. Now that first push is something we call the prep jump. We get that prep jump to harness the energy that we've maintained through the hula hoop motion, keeping our energy going, and we push down into the ground to access which direction we're going to go. And since we're focusing on the forehand side, then that's the direction that we're gonna go in. You'll notice that when I do that initial prep jump, and I push down on my tarantulas under my feet to make sure they're squashed. It's as if my head is dropping. It's not that I'm jumping up in the air. No, I'm actually falling down to be closer to my center of gravity, lower and faster to move to the bird. So you can imagine like there's a bullet flying right towards your head and you've got to dodge it by just an inch you'll see that my racket is up at about my chest level. Anytime you're doing an offensive footwork, you need your racket to be up. Because the higher your racket is, the more offensive you will be. 
the more defensive we are, the lower we'll start with our racket. So to initiate the forehand front court side for a single net shot scenario, then I'm going to be straddling the tee about a racket's distance away, a little more than, about like that. I've got my racket up and I've got my prep jump ready to go. Prep jump is the first thing. And then the second thing, my racket will move towards the direction of where I see the bird is going. The imaginary shuttle in this case. So I've got my prep jump and then my racket extends now that I see the bird is coming to my forehand. That's the first thing that moves. Now, another metaphor that I like to use has to do with walking a badly behaved dog. Everybody's probably walked a dog at some point in their life that doesn't walk on the leash nicely beside you, but runs off ahead of you. That's the same when we're doing footwork to the front court. We want to imagine that the puppy just saw a cat and it's tearing off ahead of us. So the racket has to extend immediately and quite violently and quickly towards the direction of where the bird is coming. So we've got our prep jump and then we see it's going to the forehand so the racket extends and at the same time I make my first step with my non-racket leg. Okay? Prep left. That's the first step. Prep left. And then we bring in the final step, which is an extension and a lunge onto our racket leg. Prep left, right. So we've got the prep jump left and my racket simultaneous, extending the lunge onto my racket leg. Notice my non-racket arm when I'm landing. Prep, left, land. See, this arm is out reaching for balance. Something you don't realize is actually how heavy an arm is. If I was to chop off my arm and hold it in my hand, or one hand it would be, it's quite heavy. So we don't want that energy drawing us into the corner, because then we're gonna be slower to leave the corner. So that's why we stretch it out. If you've ever watched fencing, it's similar. They keep that arm there so they can get away from their opponent in the most efficient and fastest way. So watch my arm in particular this time. Prep, left, right. It steadies me as well to prevent my racket from bouncing downward. And it keeps my left shoulder back so I can do a quick escape back to the middle. But we're not talking about the recovery right now. Right now, we're only focusing on getting to the bird in an offensive position. So for the singles positioning, I'm going to be straddling the tee with my racket out at chest level and my non-racket arm out to the side. Prep left, right. For me, it really helps to say the words that I'm working on. So if for a right-handed person, we're going to get to the lefties in a second, but for a right-handed person, We've got prep, left, extension. Prep, left, right. Prep, left, right. Now, let's show for the left-handed people. This is for the singles forehand tight net shot in an offensive position. So now I've still got my racket up at my chest level I'm going to do my prep jump lined up in the same way. I haven't turned one foot in front of the other. Right now they're square to the net. My non-racket arm is up. Prep jump right, left. So again, my racket is initiating the movement. As soon as I see the birds coming there, my racket is extending. Prep jump, I see the bird right, left. Prep jump, right, left. Again, my non-racket arm extended for balance and to help me make a faster recovery. So those are the two for the tight net singles shot. Now for a more doubles or mixed doubles scenario, we want to move our base up a little bit. And now our racket starting position is also going to be a little higher 
over our head. This is our base position for doubles and mixed doubles. And I've got my grip open in a forehand situation. So my fingers are facing over to my opponent. My non-racket arm is still up and out of the way. So again, I'm gonna do the prep jump, but this time when I extend, I'm gonna keep the racket higher in an upwards formation because that's the more common scenario for a doubles shot. It's only a slight difference, but it's worth noting so that if you're more of a doubles player, you can focus on practicing it in that way. So this is the difference. Doubles, my racket is higher. Prep jump, again, left, right. Hitting with the racket in a higher angle. Prep, left, right. Prep, left, right. Again, my, racket is, uh, my non racket arm is extended to help me make a speedy recovery. Let's try it on the left side. So I'm a little closer to the T now because I've got my partner behind me in a doubles or mixed doubles scenario. My racket is no longer at chest level, it's higher up because I'm looking to intercept the front court shots. And I've got my prep, make sure I push down hard on those spiders. Prep, and now right crossover left. Prep, right, left. Prep, right, left. So to recap today's session, we learned about the importance of the prep jump, keeping our racket position high in the offensive, and stepping with our non-racket leg and reaching out to the forehand front court for right-handed players and left-handed players. The assignment for today is eight sets of eight times moving from your prep jump to the forehand corner offensive. I want the first four sets to be slow to medium, where you're just focusing on the steps and getting the positioning perfect. Remember, if you don't practice it well, you won't be able to implement it well into your game. So it's not a race. Footwork is really about details. So the first four will be about this pace. Prep, left, right. And it only counts if I, if I do it properly. If I do my prep jump and then I step the wrong way, no, back to zero. So four in the right way of eight strokes. So one would look like this. Even slower if you need to. Take as much time in between the sets as you need. And if you're more of a doubles-minded player, then move your base up and get your racket up and do the same. Nice and slow. And working towards, for the last four sets, I want you to increase your speed and challenge yourself to try and coordinate all these things together. Prep jump racket out, reach. Prep jump racket out, reach. Remember to squash those spiders. Squash. Squash. And the more natural this becomes, the smoother it will be as you go faster. So until next time, Step your game up.